Generally speaking, a bus is where you have a set of wires, like a data bus or an address bus, where you have multiple signals going to one place or one signal going to multiple places. It's not the same as muxing and demuxing, but it's a little similar. USB, universal serial bus, you have multiple devices connected to the same infrastructure. Or you have a memory bus where multiple memory chips are sharing the same wires, that kind of thing. So you've got bus chips. They're basically just buffers that you can turn on and off. And the idea is that you have devices that you want to hook up let's say four devices hook up to the same set of wires and you don't want to engineer those devices specifically to have bus capability. There's just extra parts and everything. So you just have bus chips and you wire the devices into the bus chips and you can turn each chip on and off. The devices don't care. And then you hook those bus chips all up to your bus and turn them on one by one. And you can use encoders, decoders, whatever, to send the enable signals or receive the I want to talk now signals or whatever. The 74 series, 240, 241, and 244. The X just stands for what type of chip, like I have LS for a low power shot key. These are all basically the same chip, except for a couple details. These are their pins in the DIP version, of course. VCC and ground are standard. They are eight bits, but it's four bit buffers. So you've got four bits and four bits that you independently control. You have a one and a two buffer. So one is four wires and two is four wires. These are your inputs. So that's the first number, is one or a two, and then one G and two G are the enable disable for each of these inputs. And one, two, three, four is just which pin. Then you've got the outputs. Again, four wires for each. A is the input side and Y is the output side. And it just goes like that. And then the control signal is one G and two G. It's just a pair of on off switches. The four bits constituting buffer one. If 1G indicates that the buffer should send, then the outputs match the inputs. And if it indicates they shouldn't send, then the outputs are high impedance. So they're not putting out a signal. Because if you had both of these on at the same time and they were wired together, so you would generally have all of this going to four wires. So both of these outputs would be to the same set of wires. So this pin and this pin would both be connected together on the output side. So if they were both open, you'd short the signals together. So you only open one at a time. So 1G says, is this one open? 2G says, is this one open? And if you wanted to use an 8-bit signal, you would just have 1G and 2G tied together. You could chain these chips and have more 4-bits. Whatever you wanted to do. I'm not even going to show you on the breadboard. There's literally nothing to show. It's just pass-through. Are the outputs on or are they off? And it's so that you can connect it to a bus. So the difference between the three chips is just inverting and not inverting. So the 240 is inverted outputs. The output signals, it's just as if they got passed through an inverter. The 244 is non-inverted. That's the only difference between the two. And 1G and 2G on both of them are active low. So low means the signals are going through and high means they're not. The 241 is another non-inverting chip. It's exactly the same. 241 and 244 are the same exact chip, except according to the data sheet, 2G, instead of being active low, it's active high. So the bar is not there. So 1G active low, 2G active high. The benefit of this is you can use a single enable signal to switch between. So let's say instead of choosing these independently based on some enable signal, let's say you always wanted one or the other to be active. You always wanted to select between the two. So you would use a single signal and tie it to both and it would turn one of them on and one of them off because it's internally inverting. If you wanted to use one of the other chips, you would have to use an inverter on one of the G's. So you'd put a signal into 1G and then through an inverter into 2G to get the same behavior. So it's a convenience chip. So one thing you could use this for, because you've got inverting and not inverting, you have up to eight bits, you could say, well, sometimes I want them inverted and sometimes not. This is actually a thing I need for another project. 
So you could put the same signals into a 240 and a 244 and then use the enable and disable signals to say, okay, here they're not inverted and here they are inverted, and you just switch. So like I said, there's nothing to show. I just wanted to point all this out. But this is what a bus buffer is. A bus transceiver is different. That's designed for bidirectional communication between two devices where their pins are both input and output. Like if you had a microcontroller like an Arduino and another one where both pins could be inputs and outputs, you can, you can switch the modes and the bus transceiver would allow you to make sure that nothing ends up shorting out with no other external signals. But a bus buffer is something that goes on a device to turn it into a bus capable device. So it's unidirectional, it's one way. So I hope that was clear. If it wasn't, let me know. So I'll be seeing you.